Hello, my friends. Welcome to another episode of Vlog With Me, the series where I take you behind the scenes vlogging with me and kind of talk about what I'm filming, why I'm filming it, what I'm filming with, and just all the good juicy vlogging details, as well as what exactly we are doing. So we have quite an adventure planned today, this whole week actually. We're going camping at Manatee Springs State Park with my parents in our camper van, <laughs> the Airstream Westphalia, which I have made videos about before on this channel. But today is different because I'm going to be driving the van for the first time, pretty much for the first time. I've drove it on the highway like to practice and it's just terrified me. And I just let my husband drive every time we go somewhere in this van. I let my husband drive. What do you think, Ella? Is mama gonna do a good job driving the van? Yeah. So just for a quick tour, we've got an entire kitchen, a bathroom back there. It's a very different layout than when you see like classic sprinters rebuilt. And one of the main differences is that it has a back seat that can have a car seat. If you sacrifice that back seat, you have a lot more living space. But um, I guess to compensate, it's got this overhead area that pulls out and you can sleep up there. It's like a double bed. Personally, I don't like it. I've tried so many times, but I just feel a little claustrophobic up there. So the goal with her has been, if she can sleep up there eventually, then Brian and I can sleep on the bottom. But when she was little, um, that wasn't really an option. So I've got all my shelves here. I made some nice food. I made some delicious and healthy bean salad. And one thing that I do before I start a vlog, if something's just beautiful and I haven't officially started yet, is I will grab some shots of it, like you see here, just to kind of throw in overlay in case I end up mentioning something later, then I'll have something kind of visually to refer back to. Vlogging is a lot of like jumping from the future to the the past to the present and the present to the past and at least that's what makes vlogs visually interesting where you're not just standing here talking the whole time or just like showing what's around you there's there's places for that in a vlog but you can really mix things up by kind of referring to what happened earlier or referring to what is going to happen later and then cutting in the footage that you shot earlier or later into that present moment all right are you ready to go all right wrapping up all the details in here i'm also so sad to say goodbye to this precious little button. We've been fostering her for the last week and a half. My neighbor found her abandoned and we reached out to everyone and we did find a home for her. So our friends, people we know fortunately, our friends are coming to pick her up. Oh, Katie. I think we got some good B-roll of her. <laughs> I was like, you don't always have beautiful things to film in your life, but when you do, all right, I think I'm just delaying the inevitable. At this point, I need to go get in that van, get in the driver's seat, be brave, <laughs> and get on the road. Go get in that van, get in the driver's seat, be brave, <laughs> and get on the road. All right, little update from the road. We are two and a half hours in. I did pretty well. Yeah, it was not as scary as I thought. I got used to it. And just to keep things simple, for the beginning of this trip at least, I decided to just put the Canon M50 with the 16 millimeter vlogging lens on the switch pod. So it's just like a handle that I'm holding rather than the gimbal. I just didn't want to have the gimbal all set up floating around the van, but I will set it up at some point. We got the road. Wireless Go for vlogging, which we just pass back and forth. If she decides to talk, you ready to get there? How long until we get there? Two. Two minutes? Yeah. Are you excited to get there? Two and a half minutes, right? We're two and a half minutes, yeah, I wish. And ta-da, I did it, and I parked it. And now my dad's helping me hook things up. <laughs> Say hi, Daddy. Hi, everybody. So I'm gonna do a time lapse. Not a time lapse, actually just like footage sped up because it's not gonna take that long that I need it to be like super slow. I've done this in a, I kinda had a series going when we first got this van called Van Vlogs. Van Vlogs. Um, but I did a time lapse of the setup and it looked really cool. So I'm gonna try that again. have made it. How you like camping? 
We had our first night in the van last night. How was it? It was okay. And we walked down and checked out the... I love you, your words. Okay. Well, we are going back down there. It's absolutely beautiful. The springs, we swam a little bit. She swam a little bit. It was cold, but we're going to definitely go swimming tomorrow. But right now, I'm going to go out in the kayak and get some footage of the gorgeous, like, trees and just, I don't want to say swamp, but the springs and the turtles and the animals and all the things. my daughter. Okay, my parents and my daughter think I'm crazy right now because I just had them launch me on this kayak with all this gear, gimbals, backpack, dome lens, GoPro, just a few things. Oh my gosh, missed that. A bunch of fish just jumped um, because this is amazing out here and I just want to float around and get some good shots of this stuff. I wouldn't say this is the good shot of it. I've got an 18 to 135 uh, millimeter lens on my gimbal and yeah, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be worth it. It's gonna be worth the risk. <laughs> Don't stand up. Can you wave at mommy? All right, this is going well. So far, so good. The gimbal's pretty easy to operate. The only thing is I have to set it down in between paddling and operating it, and gimbals don't like to be set down. They really don't want to be set down unless you turn them off first, or else they'll start shaking and freaking out. So on, off, on, off with that. And I'm also filming on the old dome lens, which I used to love and film on all the time. This is just the GoPro, I don't know, six. Like my seven broke, and I just gave up on getting new GoPros. So that's my latest action camera, and the dome lens gives it this nice half up, half in, half out shot, which looks really cool sometimes. I'm sure it'll look awesome here because the water's so clear and there's so much going on below the surface. And I'm also juggling the fact that there's alligators here, <laughs> and I'm just kind of keeping a watch out for them. Juggling many things. At least I'm not juggling Ella, as she is safe with my dad, and my dad's watching my back too, of course. But this is nice, this is fun. Hello, just catching up with you guys a few days after shooting that kayak footage. That was so much fun. And I wanted to fill you in on like how much I was loving the use of a longer lens. This is the 18 to 135 millimeter lens by Canon, especially paired with the movement of the kayak and the stabilization of the gimbal like that the gimbal provided because the look of a longer lens in video can be amazing, but stabilization does become more of a challenge once focal length is increased. So I think between the gimbal and the kayak, it really like handled this whole situation very, very well and it was just gorgeous. Now this isn't a crazy fancy lens. It's made by Canon. I think it's just like 300 bucks, um, 18 to 135 millimeter and it's an F 3.5 to 5.6. So what I was missing on this trip, especially since the woods were kind of so dark once you like really zoomed into them, um, is a larger aperture. So if I had a larger aperture, I could have got more light coming into the lens, especially in those dark places. But if it did have a larger aperture, especially when zoomed, it would cost a heck of a lot more. So it's 3.5 when it's not zoomed. But once you zoom in, that's when it shoots down to a 5.6, which just isn't that large of an aperture. So I am in the market for like that perfect kind of everyday um, zoom lens when you don't know what focal length you're going to want, but you know, they do make them with like a 2.8 continuous aperture. And I'm trying to figure out the best uh, solution, whether it's to mount one on the M50 or maybe move to a mirrorless camera. But right now, this is a really good solution for just like getting started and wanting to experiment with a longer focal length. And I'm using it on the M50 with the Calm Light adapter. There are many different adapters uh, you can use to make an EFS mount lens become an M mount. So that's what you got to do is use that adapter. And the whole the whole setup's a little bit bigger, you know. But 
it's okay. It's worth it. So during this kayaking time, I also made use of the GoPro with the dome lens, which is one of my favorite things of all time. And this is just like a plastic kind of mount piece that just pushes the water away from the lens. So you can get that split screen shot of above water and below water at the same time, which is really cool. Um, it's gotta be, this one's kind of beat up. So the plastic has some, you know, scratches on it, which does mess with the quality of the shot. So it's kind of just a trade off. And this one fits my GoPro 6. So it's part of the reason I still have the GoPro 6. Um, but, you know, I do want to level up the underwater action camera situation here in the future, um, especially because the next day we went over to a different springs area called Fanning Springs. And I was pretty much just shooting on the GoPro. Um, it was so much fun, just jumping and playing and having a good time and kind of taking a break from vlogging while still getting a few shots. And this area was also the classic vlogging situation problem of having gear, not really being able to have your gear there because while I was swimming, people just had their bags like sitting in areas where you couldn't really be near them and like the whole like theft issue and you don't really just don't want to have like lots of valuables sitting there. So I took my bigger camera, I took one of them down in the beginning and just got some shots of the area and then put everything back in the car and switched to just the GoPro because it is always the one camera that you can have without attracting much attention. And there were people there with like way better <laughs> action cameras, underwater action cameras than I had. Insta360, One X or One R. I think that might be the one that I go for next. I don't know. Let me know what you guys are using for action cameras these days because I would love to hear your thoughts and if you're happy with what you have. Every time a new model comes out, everyone makes it sound like it's the best thing in the world. But, you know, I think after you use something for a while is when you really get a feel for it. So let me know what you recommend for action cameras. Are we still on GoPros or have we moved on? Yeah, baby. Hi, guys. Can you tell them all the fun stuff we've been doing? Swim. What did you see? What animals did you see? Crocodiles, <laughs> not quite, Maybe like a baby alligator. So continuing on, that evening after swimming in the Fanning Springs, we took another walk down along that same boardwalk that I was kayaking next to. And it was just really spontaneous after dinner. My mom was like, let's go walk down there and just see the sunset. And I was like, okay, I didn't know if it was gonna be absolutely epic or if it was just gonna be the, I don't know what I was thinking, but I just grabbed the M50 with the 18 to 135, but with no gimbal. I didn't want to carry the gimbal if it like wasn't amazing, which is just another constant vlogging problem. It's not just about deciding what gear to bring on the trip. It's about deciding what gear to bring on every little situation within the trip. It can be very tricky. That's part of the reason I want that all around, just good for everything lens. This is so pretty. Oh man, I should have brought different cameras and I should have brought the gimbal. This is pretty mama. But I went without the gimbal and this is a good, you know, opportunity to show you what kind of shots you can get on the M50 with no gimbal. They can be really good if you really put a lot of concentration into making them smooth and making them stable. All the tricks, focusing, exhaling, locking certain muscles. I have a whole video on how to get smooth footage um, without using a gimbal. And then one of the best tricks is by shooting in 60 frames a second and then slowing it down to 24 frames a second. So that will stretch out that moment of smoothness even longer. And it doesn't come across as like, oh, here's some slow-mo. It's just like, okay, here's a smoother shot. And that's a, a really good trick. So tonight I'm gonna go down again to the same area at sunset, but with a gimbal and shoot um, with a little bit more motion. So you'll be able to see the difference. And I'm also gonna bring the Sigma F 1.4. I brought the 30 millimeter, uh, which I wish I brought the 56, <laughs> but I've got the 30 and I think that F 1.4 is gonna be nice for really getting into those areas of darkness. Um, so I can brighten them up and just see how beautiful they are because this whole park and just this whole area is just so many. I'm just overwhelmed with how pretty everything is. Also, have you just got home? Um, the cord bent. Well, can Daddy take a look at it? Yeah. What's that, Mom? 